So we will continue. We have looked at intranets and extranets, and we have seen a couple of advantages of uh, using intranets and extranets. But there are uh, some issues that you need to consider when it comes to uh, using extranets. The first one is uh, whether the, the levels of usage are sufficient. Because in order to implement an extra, uh, extranet, you will incur some costs. To, to extend your, your uh, internet or your internal network to other uh, users outside your organization will involve some, some costs. So the usage has to justify the costs, whether it's worth incurring costs to extend the internet, uh, your, your internal network to other users. So you, you don't do it just because other organizations are doing it, but you do it because it's important to your organization. So uh, it's very important to consider uh, the levels of uh, usage, especially those that are, are provided with access to this internet, or whether they really uh, use it, and that use justifies the, the investment uh, into it. Another factor that relates to that is uh, uh, effectiveness and uh, efficiency, whether uh, the, uh, this uh, extranet is uh, effi uh, efficient in terms of uh, usage, uh, whether it's uh, effective, that you, are, you achieve the intended goals of having an extra net. And also you need to consider uh, uh, an issue with the ownership of the extra net, because w when it comes to uh, ownership, then it determines the responsibilities uh, of maintaining this uh, uh, extra net and providing for services such as security. So it's very important to, to be clear about ownership and to decide uh, the limits, uh, especially of those that are outside uh, the organization, to know where the limits are for them, which uh, uh, information or resources they can access and which uh, they cannot. And also, uh, levels of service uh, quality, and this is uh, quite obvious that you need to have an extranet that meets a uh, uh, reasonable level of uh, service. And uh, it might be challenging sometimes to, to maintain a desirable service level, but it's uh, uh, one of the factors that you need to consider uh, because in order to achieve uh, intended goals of having an extranet, you need to have an, uh, an extranet that's operating at uh, a reasonable or uh, desired uh, service level. And lastly is the uh, quality of uh, uh, information that is shared uh, on this extranet. The quality of information determines whether this information will be used to, to those who are uh, access it or not. So uh, the fact that uh, your business partners or your customers uh, can access your uh, private network does not mean anything if the kind of information they access is not important to them. So it's very important that you make sure that these uh, partners access relevant and quality information. Another concept that uh, relates to intranets and extranets is uh, firewalls. Uh, I think most of you are, are worried about firewalls. So this is nothing but uh, a security uh, uh, for, uh, for a network to, to prevent people that are not authorized uh, to access your intranet or extranet from accessing it. So it's a network security system. It's a, a, a block that prevents unauthorized uh, uh, traffic uh, into your uh, network. So basically, a firewall establishes a, a barrier between a, a trusted, uh, secure internal network and another uh, network. So as I say, uh, when you have a, a, an extranet or a, a, an internet, other internet uh, users cannot have access to, to your uh, private uh, network. Or in case of uh, extranet, only those that are authorized can have uh, access to it. So firewalls creates that uh, barrier, provides that uh, security bar to, to prevent uh, unauthorized uh, users from accessing your, your, your uh, network. So it's, it's very important for intranet and uh, 
extraneous because uh, they help to ensure uh, security of your data. So this uh, uh, picture is just an is illustration of the uh, firewall where you have a private intranet that is network within a, an organization and this network uh, in your organization can be uh, extended to business partners, a provider or a, a distributor through internet but you have a firewall and that is a network security which prevents other internet users from accessing your, your, your private network except those that are authorized. So intranets and uh, extranets uh, may appear to be a, a, a change to, to, to an organization that is adopting digital technology. We, we said in the introduc introductory lecture that there are many companies th now that are trying to transform their business models into digital or, uh, business uh, model. And the notion of having an internet or extending your private network to outside users may not be uh, very understandable to, to these uh, traditional uh, organizations that are used to keeping uh, their proprietary information for themselves. So it's uh, important for an organization that is uh, trying to transform its business into a, a digital model uh, to, to be, uh, to encourage its uh, users, em employees, and educate them about uh, uh, these uh, uh, technologies. So there are a number of uh, issues that have been re reported with regard to to intranets and extranets in, in many organizations. That uh, one is staff are not so willing to, to use the intranet. So as I said earlier, one of the objective of having an intranet is to facilitate information sharing within an organization. But it appears that at least research shows most em employees are not that willing to utilize the intranet as uh, actually the, 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 obje the goal is. And you have a problem with uh, updating the, the, the content uh, because we want to have a, a, a system of sharing a, a, an information to keep people uh, updates regarding what is uh, happening in, in the organization and to help them uh, respond uh, to the needs in time. But it appears that in most organizations, uh, the content uh, kept on the internet is not up to date. So this is uh, a, a challenge, but uh, uh, you have to be aware that if you have uh, an internet where the information is uh, out of date, then in a way you are beating the, the, the objective of having an, an internet. The internet could be inconsistent in appearance, especially when uh, for those sections that are managed by uh, different groups or different departments within an organization. Uh, one of, uh, of the objective of having an internet is to enhance integration within an organization to, to, to allow different uh, functional areas, different departments to uh, communicate, to interact with, an, uh, with one another, to create a kind of uniformity within an organization. But this is not uh, uh, the case. And it's very typical to, to, to have an internet where all the, um, the information is just reference and it's reference materials, description of uh, departments, and that's it. So you want to have an internet where you have news, uh, up to date, and that's where you save the, the objective of having information and sharing uh, information. So with, re with regard to our, uh, digital uh, business technologies, the last thing that I would like to talk about is open source software. I hope most of you uh, have heard about uh, open soft, uh, software. And these are software that are developed collabor in collaboration between independent uh, vendors by a community. Or, uh, they are, uh, sorry, it's developed by uh, a community of, say, users, software developers, 
independent vendors. So we know we, they are established uh, vendors, say like Microsoft and others, but with the uh, open source uh, software, you have uh, a community of uh, software developers as well as users that uh, together they help to, to develop this uh, software. And they have become quite popular today. They are present almost in all categories, in browsers, uh, operating systems, content management systems. Y you can find uh, an open, sof uh, open source uh, software almost in every uh, category. And this uh, presents an opportunity for a startup business uh, uh, because it, it helps you to, to avoid uh, or to reduce cost of starting up business by taking advantage of uh, uh, these software. So there are a couple of benefits uh, for those people that advocate uh, the use of open software. They, are, they, they advocate that through open uh, source software, it's possible for businesses to be mm. agile. We, we, we talked about uh, uh, strategic uh, agility in this class a couple of lectures ago, that ability to respond to uh, environmental changes quickly, that we know the business environment is changing uh, rapidly, that there are a lot of things that happen in the uh, environment that affect your business that are uh, changing so rapid and you need to have a kind of ability to respond to these changes. So they argue that open source uh, uh, software helps you to, to improve your, your, your uh, agility. And that is because, because you have a, a large community of people that contribute to the so, uh, software development, then it's easy uh, to speed up uh, uh, development of the software and to have a kind of software that can respond to the needs of your uh, uh, business. But also it helps to reduce uh, costs. These software are free of charge. So as I said, it, it, it helps you to, to, to avoid upfront uh, costs for, for the software that you would otherwise pay and make you focus on your, your, your uh, business. And w one example of companies that are using this uh, 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 approach is uh, Netflix. And this is one of the reasons why they are able to charge very low uh, uh, prices. Of course, it's not uh, that alone, but it's one of the factors that contribute to, uh, for them to be able to charge lower prices because they are Mo most of the uh, w everything that uh, they, they use is built on uh, open source uh, software. And then it's also easy to ca customize uh, the, uh, the software, that is to, to, to modify the software to suit your uh, needs. And that is because these platforms will, will provide you with all the building blocks uh, for, for developing a software that is uh, relevant for your, your needs, but at least you, you don't need to build from the scratch. You have someone that provides you with the building blocks and you can just customize or tailor it uh, to suit your, your, your needs. And some of them argue that uh, it helps to improve uh, quality because you, you have a large community that is working on this uh, software. And whenever there is a flow, there is an error of, in the code uh, of the software, it can easily be noticed because you have a lot of people that are involved in this pro project. So uh, any errors, any flaws can easily be uh, noticed and be uh, corrected. And that helps to, to, to improve uh, quality. And this is a, a quote from uh, uh, managing director of uh, Bank of America who says uh, there is a, a consequential benefit to open source from both a reliability and financial perspective. So basically, open source uh, software is not just for small uh, businesses, but even uh, large uh, organizations like Bank of America use open source software. Actually, even the United States of America government, uh, the, for their content management, uh, they, they use uh, open so uh, source software. So it's increasing, it increasingly it's becoming uh, popular and many organizations are moving in, in, into this uh, uh, direction. However, we, we cannot be uh, naive of the, factors, uh, of the fact that there are also some issues uh, regarding open source software. One is there is no guarantee of updates. So op uh, 
contrary to proprietary software like commercial software that you, you buy with open uh, so, so software there is no guarantee it's free and no one is bound to update uh, the software of course as I said, the, the community is large and people are voluntarily, uh, on a volunteer basis, uh, contribute to new codes, but it's not a guarantee. No, no, nobody uh, gives any guarantee with respect uh, to that. So in some cases, you might be stuck w with uh, an older uh, software for quite some, some time. And also, if you are currently using uh, a commercial uh, uh, software, proprietary software, it can be quite expensive to, to migrate to an op, uh, open uh, source software. W there are cases of people that have lost a lot of their uh, data just in the cause of migrating from uh, a commercial software to uh, open source uh, software. And sometimes this software may not be compatible to certain uh, hardware that your organization uh, uh, is using so and that is because there are so many proprietary or commercial hardware that are tied to certain uh, software that may not be compatible to this so that in this case that will limit your uh, ability to use this uh, uh, software but of course we see increasingly uh, now most of hardware manufacturers are, are, are trying to, to, to open up especially as the uh, the concept of uh, sharing economy now is uh, is increasing. Many companies are trying to to integrate the notion of uh, sharing economy into their business model. So this will uh, uh, will continue to be uh, in increasingly in important. And the last disadvantage is uh, there are no warranties. When you have a commercial software, usually you would it would come with a, a warranty, but uh, this is not uh, the case. So if you're working for an organization where, uh, uh, among other things, the procurement uh, policies require you to buy things uh, that have uh, warranties, then open source software may not be uh, for you. And that's it. So this is the end of this uh, topic. And next week, we will start the, the second part of the course. And that is the, the strategy. Uh, part of it.